and absolute convergence. Okay, so this series, um, just this one, you know, look at that one for, let's look at this one, converge or diverge? Diverges. Or, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, yeah. Diverges because it's a, it's a P series and P equals one, which is less than or equal to one. So it diverges, okay? Now, this series right here, if we, if, so, so here, this is just one over N. So it's one plus a half plus a third plus a fourth and so on. Okay, this one right here is, you got negative one to the end. So really right here, you're, you're looking at when n is one, you have negative one, and then you have plus a half, and then minus a third, and plus a fourth, minus a fifth, okay? And so on. So that's what this series looks like. This one actually converges. So the same terms in magnitude as this one, but they alternate this is called alternating. They alternate between negative and positive signs. And this right here is the key that makes this term right there makes it alternate. So, and another way, another way you could, that sometimes people write this is writing cosine n pi because when n is one, cosine is negative one, just like this is negative one. But then when n is two, then it's positive one. So when n is, odd, this is negative, and when n is even, this is positive, just like this term right here. And another way, okay, and then another another um, way this com comes up would be like this, where you've got n plus one. This is if you wanted, if you wanted to lead off with a plus, okay? So when n is one, then this would be, po it would be positive one. Okay, so if you had a sequence like this, then you'd have the pluses on the odd ones and the negatives on the evens. Okay, this is a different way. This is a different. Whereas this is equivalent to that. Okay, so there's just a number of ways that you can identify alternating series. Also, you know, you, you could see a bunch of terms going plus or minus, plus, minus, plus. Um, this is another way of doing it right here, where you have n, which is which is basically the same as this, negative one to the n minus one. Those are equal to each other. And essentially, if n is odd, then these will be pos plus one, and when n is even, these will be negative one. Okay, so that's another way of, of looking at it. Okay, so that that's um, the reason that it converges is because um, it's kind of like this. If you look at if you look at the partial sums, if you look at the partial sums, there's a negative one, right? That's the first one. Let's say that's zero. That's your first partial sum right here. Just adding that up. Second partial sum would be this plus that. So I put this right here at a half. Second partial sum right there. That's those two together. Okay. Third partial sum, let me do a different color. Third partial sum would be adding those three together. And so you have negative one plus a half brings you back to here. Minus a third is going to take you back to somewhere around here. Oh, come on, man. So adding those three together. And what happens is the next one plus adding a fourth to it is going to put us somewhere in between these two. And then, then subtracting a fifth will put us between that and then this one. And so what's happening is you're always trapped. So that's four might be right here. That's adding all the way to there. And then S5 is going to be in between those two. S six is going to be between S seven is going to be between those two. Everything from then on, everything is going to be between there. So you're basically just boxing it. You're just like you're creating these boundaries that are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and converging to 
their distance between the two boundary points is converging to zero. So um, that's pretty much how that works. And this sort of explains a little bit of what's going on. Um, let's look at number, let's look at exercise number one. What is an alternating series? An alternating series is a series whose is a, is a, what? Hold on, let me bring the homework up. Forgot to bring it up here. Okay, alternate series is a series whose terms are alternately positive and negative. Okay, so you can see that they alternate between positive and negative. Um, under which conditions does an alternating series converge? Okay, so if you if, you, if your terms are a sub n is negative one to the n b sub n, where b sub n is positive, okay. So and you also have this right here. These are this means that they're decreasing, okay. So for example, in this um, in this series here, b one would be one, and b two would be one half. And B3 would be positive one third. Okay, so all the Bs are positive term are positive, they're the absolute values. And then you also have this condition right here. So one over n plus one is always going to be less than or equal to one over n. Actually, it's less than, which means it's less than or equal to, so it satisfies this. Okay. And the limit goes to zero. That's the other condition. So the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n is zero. Okay. And if it satisfies that and that, and then they're alternating positive and negative, then the series will converge. Okay, part C, if these conditions are satisfied, what you can see about the remainder. Okay, now because they're being boxed in, then the total then the total sum after is called the remainder. Okay, so for example, in this case right here, um, after three terms, if we sum, if we take the partial sum of just those three terms, the remainder would be the sum of all of the rest of the terms, all the rest of the terms, and. Because they're nested like this, the size of the error is at most the next term. Okay, so what's happening? So, if, like, it's, take the first three terms here, for example. That puts us to S3. Okay, that's S3. Adding those three together gives you S3. Now, if we add one fourth to it, we get S4. Okay. Um, then every term, every partial sum past this one, every partial sum past this one is going to be between S3 and S4. Okay, and so for example, so like if, if I if I say if I say n equals three, for example, okay, then this right here will be S3. Okay, now, and then every term, this distance right here, this distance will be B n plus one, which is B sub four, which is one fourth. Okay, in this case, this distance here, from here to here is one fourth. The distance, and then every single partial sum after that, the distance between S3 and that partial sum is going to be less than or equal to one fourth. So that's what this is right here. It's going to be at most one fourth. Okay. 
the actual and so therefore the actual sum has to be at most one fourth. And that means the error is at most, or the the, the error, the sum of the, all the rest of the terms has, has to be at, at most one fourth. Okay. Because here's one fourth. If you added all the rest of the terms up, another way to look at it is if you added all the rest of the terms up, you'd have one fourth minus something that's a little bit smaller, plus something that's smaller than one fifth, and minus something that's a little bit smaller than that. And so basically, this term. And all the rest of them that added together is going to be positive. But if you take this one and all the rest of them together with this one, that was going to be negative. Okay. So the error is at most one fourth. Okay. So that's kind of where we're at there. Um, so let's move on to exercise number two. Determine whether the series is convergent or divergent. Now, Essentially, because the limit as n goes to infinity of one over at log n, that's going to be zero, and it goes down monotonically, right? So therefore, it converges. The series is going to converge. Now, if we're looking at this one versus this one, this one actually diverges. This series here, and this converges. This is taking the opposite values of the terms, and that diverges. the The reason is because log n is less than n. So therefore, one over log n is greater than one over n, and we know that this ser the series involving one over n diverges. So and this, so this are, and these terms are bigger. So these terms are bigger than one over n. So this series is going to diverge also. Now, one thing to note right here is that when you have the series of absolute values diverging, and but the series that with the alternating terms, alternating positive and negative, converges, then we say, okay, well, it converges, but we also say it converges conditionally. Okay, so this series converges conditionally because if you take the opposite values, it's gonna diverge. Okay, any questions about that? Let's move on to number three. They determine whether this series converges is convergent or divergent. What do you think? Is it convergent? Yeah, it converges. Because of the negative one to the n? Is that the reason why it would converge? Yes, because negative one to n, so negative one to the n plus one. And because you take the limit as n goes to infinity of one over, that goes to zero. Monotonically also, it's also monotone. Okay, so contrast that with this series here. If we just had this right here, would this converge or diverge? That one would divert. Wait, no, it's to the one half. Yeah, that's that's diver that's yeah, divergent. Okay. It would diverge. Great. So you, because you compare this with this one right here. And one half is less than or equal to one. That mm -hmm. diverges. Okay, so that means that this right here can uh, converge. So it converges, but um, converges conditionally. Okay, number four. What do you think? Uh, that converges or diverges? Converges. 
Um, Wait. Mm. Yeah, it's going to diverge. It's going to diverge. Yeah, you know why? Why is that? You can tell because if you take the limit as and goes to infinity of this, that goes to one. It doesn't go to zero. It does, they don't, the terms don't, go, don't converge to zero. So one condition for convergence is that the terms go to zero and this doesn't happen. What, what actually happens as n gets larger, you're, all, you're bouncing between something that's really close to one and something that's close to negative one. That's what happens right here. So diverges. Okay, let's look at number five. Here we have negative one to the n times five times n to the n over n factorial. And this one, um, you can kind of think, okay, uh, maybe this is not going to get anywhere because you, you've got five n to the n over n factorial. What happens as that goes to infinity? Um, I guess you could maybe write it like this. This is n times n times n, like n times, right? And then the denominator is n times n minus one times n minus two, all the way down to two and then one. And so, okay, these are gonna cancel, but then you have n over n minus one, n over n minus two. And then over here, you've got n over one. So, this is actually going to go to infinity. So therefore, this is divergent. Uh, okay, thought series is going to be divergent. You can also try the ratio test on that and you would get infinity. Okay, number six. Okay, show that the series is convergent using the alternating series test. So what are the BNs in this case? Would BN be one over N to the sixth? Yes, okay, so the BN is the absolute value of the AN, and these are the ANs, okay? So that's one over six. And the limit is going to be, as I go to finish, the limit of that is zero, okay? Because it gets larger than one over N, it gets smaller, one over N to the six is even smaller, so it goes to zero pretty quickly. Okay, so since n limit as n goes to infinity v sub n is equal to zero. Wait, wrong symbol. Equals zero and bn is um, less than bn plus, uh, bn plus one is less than equal to bn. So when you put n plus one in here, you get something that's, n plus one is larger than n, right? So one over, n plus one to the six is smaller than one over n to the six. Therefore, this series converges. Okay. Um, so I would like to, to note really quickly right here that if you were to take the absolute value of the terms, like this, one over n to the six, this one converges, right? Okay, because that's a P series. And P is six, which is greater than one. So it converges. So because of that, we say the original the original series, which is this one right here, converges absolutely.
Okay, and that's a term that we're going to learn. That's that this, the other term that we're that we're going that the class is based on today. Okay, so converges. So this this series converges absolutely because just because of this series of the absolute the terms the absolute value of, of the terms also converges. Okay, now you want to know you want to estimate that the error less than one ten point zero 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 zero. Zero 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 five. How many terms do you need? Okay. So, um, what you can do to do to figure that one out is if you make a list right here of values of n and what your b sub n is, which is one over n to the six. Okay. I used a calculator. 1 over 1 to the 6 is 1. 1 over 2 to the 6 is 0 0.015625. You keep going until you get something smaller than that. Okay, and this is what I have right here. I kept, I used just using a calculator. Okay, that's four zeros in a six. This is four zeros in a five. And so the next one's gonna give it to me. Four zeros is then a two, one, four. Okay, so this is one over six to the six. It's approximately this. It goes on. There's more decimals. It's approximately that. Okay, so because, um, six does it, that means n equals six. Um, okay, that means that n plus one is six. That means n equals five will do it. So five terms will do it. Okay, so because six drops us under the, the error that we want, then five terms will do the trick because the sixth one doesn't add, adds less than that. Okay, and so it's up here, the n plus first term, b sub, the, the size of the error is at most b n plus one, so n plus one. That's why we put a five instead of putting the six. Okay, any questions about that? Uh, why was it n plus one equals six again? Is that because on the on the original series that's negative one n plus one? Why does why does what? Um on on the bottom here we have five terms. And we have n plus one equals six and then n equals five. Um, why is n just not six? Oh, it's because it's because of this. That most b n plus one, there's n uh, plus okay. one there. Okay. So your n plus first term, once that's once that's underneath the desired error, then you don't need that term. You can just go with you can you can um just go with prior dot. So if we add that, if we added these up by multiplying by the appropriate the corresponding negative ones on some of these, add those up, then um then um as opposed to adding is to keep on going and until further and further and further, then that will give us the desired error. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Number seven. Determine the values of p for which the given series converges. So here we have negative one to the n minus one, all over n to the p plus four. Okay. So here the p is in kind of a weird place. And um, first of all, if it this um, p plus four is greater than one, then we know that it's going to converge for sure, right? But um, 
But we also know that this will converge if, P is, if this is greater than one. So if we had P plus, if greater than zero, I'm sorry. If it's greater than zero, it will converge as, and so we have P greater than negative four. Wait, I'm sorry, wait. Okay, I wrote this problem down wrong. This should be a three right here. Okay, so it should be P plus three greater than zero. And so that's P greater than negative three. Okay, so this should be the answer to that one. Um, now, if you had um, P plus three greater than one, okay, this would be the P series. Would be getting a great fitting this greater than one. Um, so P greater than negative two would mean it converges absolutely. Absolutely convergent. Convergent. Okay, it's absolutely convergent if it converges and the series involving the absolute values is convergent. Okay, so this is the key right here because really if this converges, then this is gonna converge by the way. So you really only need this part right here. Um, so for example, this last one, this is not possible. It's not possible for this series to diverge, but then, absolute, the abs then converge absolutely. Um, but it is possible to uh, converge, but where that diverges. And this is called, this right here is called conditionally convergent. Oh, duh, there's right there. So that would be this right here, conditionally convergent. No, I'm sorry, not that one. Converges, but that diverges. So I mixed that up. So this one, so this one right here, Converge this where the series converges, but the series involving opposite values diverges. And we've gone a few, a few of examples already of those. Okay, part C, if the series of positive terms converges, then what can we say about this series? Okay, so if these terms com this converges, then this is going to also converge. And it will be absolutely convergent. Okay. So basically, um, the way that you test absolute convergence, if you have a, a series like this and these B sub ends are positive, then, and you have this, then it's negative one to the end. So it's alternating. This makes it alternating where these are positive and that's one negative one to the nth power right there. Then this is the, this right here is the absolute value of those terms. Okay. So basically, what this is saying is that. B sub n is actually the absolute value of, of the terms in this case, when you're written like this. And so it's absolutely convergent. Okay, let's move on to number number nine. Any questions about that? Okay, we'll move to number nine. So there are three possibilities for a series. It could be absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, or divergent. And so here we have this series, and we need to guess which one of the three it is. You wanna you wanna take a guess at which one you think it is of those three? If we took if we look at um, if we look at and ignore the negative one, just put a one instead of that, negative one to the n. And we write this as a power, what power would that be? This is the ninth root of n to the fourth. 
So the power would be four over nine. Okay, whatever the power is, and then divide by the root, the, the order of the root. So four over nine. Okay, and this series is, is this gonna converge or diverge? That one diverges. Yeah, this diverges because p is equal to uh, 4 over 9, which is less than or equal to 1. So this series diverges. Okay, however, um, what happens as n goes to infinity? What happens to this as n goes to infinity? That goes to zero because you have one over n raised to a positive power, so that's going to go to zero. And so that so this is going to be conditionally convergent. Okay. And that's because it converges by the alternating series test, but this diverges. The series I'm just ignoring that. Um, disturb diverges. Okay, uh, any questions about that? Okay, let's go to number 10. Determine whether the series is absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, or divergent. Okay, this is kind of out of place here because this isn't really a this is not really an alternating series. This numerator So the um If you were to take the absolute value of this um this the sign n okay we'll look at it this way Sign n is always between negative one and one, right? It's always between negative one and one and one. So the most that this could be would be 11 in absolute value. And if you look at, if you just look at 11 over n to the fourth, that series, does this converge or diverge? It converges. Yeah, because uh, p is equal to four, which is greater than one. So it converges. Okay, so that means that this is absolutely convergent. By comparison test. You're comparing it with this series here. 